Welcome to this control systems lesson on stability. Today, we'll learn about the routh hurwitz criterion, a way to figure out if a system is stable. If I'm pronouncing routh hurwitz incorrectly, please just mock me in the comments like normal. I'm used to it. In our last lesson on stability, we learned about stability and looked at several different examples of pole locations that indicated a system is stable or unstable. So we know that for a system to be stable, its poles should lie in the left half of the S-plane, right? And what else do we need? However, this visual inspection only really works with simpler systems. If you have anything much harder than a quadratic equation, it's going to be a real challenge to find those poles. Now, honestly, this isn't exactly straightforward either. And really, once you understand what's going on here, I'd highly recommend using a computer program like MATLAB or Scilab to calculate this. But one, it's very important to understand what's going on behind the scenes with simulations when you're an engineer. And two, if you're in school, your professor will make you do it the hard way to make sure you actually understand what's going on. But let's try and make this as intuitive and straightforward as possible. Let's start with a system with a generic characteristic equation. Now, for a system to be truly stable, we have to ensure that all the poles lie on the left side of the S-plane, or that the real components are all negative, as we discussed in the previous lesson. And there's actually a quick way to see if a system is unstable. This approach is based on two things. First, is that if all poles are on the left side of the S-plane, all the coefficients of the equation, q sub s, should have the same sign. The main reason why we get a coefficient of a different sign is because we have a pole in the right half of the plane. The second is that there should be no missing term. So there can't be any coefficients that are equal to zero between the highest power of s and the lowest power of s in the equation. Sadly, this isn't enough to declare that the system is stable. For a system to be stable, it is necessary that they meet these two criteria. Unfortunately, it isn't sufficient to declare the system stable. This seems like a semantics thing, but it's an important distinction. If the polynomial has the same signs for the coefficients and none of the coefficients are zero, then it could be stable. If it doesn't meet those criteria, however, then it is definitely unstable. But to verify that a system that seems stable by this approach is actually stable, we will need the RH criterion to verify it. So this is another need for the RH or routh hurwitz criterion. So let's jump into it. We need to generate a Routh array, which shows that I can't actually avoid trying to say this name. But let's use a standard characteristic equation. First, let's arrange the coefficients of this equation in an array in this manner. As you can see, starting with the first row, we are just writing the coefficients in the first and second row of the array, alternating between the two rows. At this point, it's just plugging the numbers in, so your only concern is making sure you're matching them correctly. Next, we form the third row with the following procedure. Watch carefully as we create a third row with a new set of coefficients that we call b, that are the result of some simple arithmetic using the original coefficients. Now, while there is some math involved, it is very simple math, so do not let it intimidate you. For the next row, we do it the same way. Things may be getting jumbled here, but it is still not difficult. We will continue doing this until we get to s to the zero, thus finishing the complete Routh array as shown. So now we have the Routh array. This is obviously rather tedious and, with more complicated equations, will be sped up tremendously with some computer magic. But with this, we can now move to interpreting whether a system is stable from this array. As discussed earlier, from the RH criterion, for a system to be stable, it is sufficient that all the elements of the first column of the Routh array are positive. If this condition is not met, we can immediately declare the system unstable, and the number of sign changes in the first column of the Routh array will give the number of poles that lie in the right half of the S-plane. OK, let's do two examples, one of a stable and one of an unstable system. So let's look at this characteristic equation. s cubed plus 4s squared plus 9s plus 10 equals 0. Using your algebra skills or some sort of calculator, you can find that the roots of this equation are at s equals negative 2 and also s equals negative 1 plus or minus j2. Since all the poles are in the left half of the s-plane, we can assume that this system is stable. However, we'll verify this result with the RH criterion. The first two rows should be straightforward. We have the highest power as 3 in the s cubed portion. So a3 is 1 and a2 is 4 and we can just throw that in for the first column of the first two rows. 
we can also put A1 and A0 in the second column of the first two rows. But for the third row, we need to calculate that Bn minus 1, which would be B2 in this case. We have A2 times A1 minus A3 times A0, all divided by A2. So 4 times 9 minus 1 times 10 divided by 4, which gives us 6.5. We also need to see if B1 will affect our answer. Using our equation and plugging in the numbers, we get 4 times 0 minus 1 times 0 over 4, which of course gives us 0, so it won't affect our next equation. Finally, Cn minus 1, or C2, will have 6.5 times 10 minus 4 times 0 over 6.5, which gives us 10. We have now successfully completed our array. Now, looking at the array, we can see that all the elements of the first column of the Routh array are positive, so there are no sign changes and we can confidently confirm that the system is stable. Again, this is very simple, yet there are a lot of things going on. As long as you write everything down right and don't make any transcription errors, you should arrive at this array easily. Now, let's consider another example. s cubed plus s squared plus 3s minus 5. Since this equation has one negative coefficient, we can immediately say that the system is unstable. But again, let's verify it. This time, I'll give you the opportunity to go through and create the array yourself. If you'd like to do so, I recommend pausing the video now, putting the array together, and comparing your results with what I get. So we end up with 1, 1, 8, and negative 5 in the first column of the array. Since there is a sign change between s1 and s0 with 8 and negative 5, we confirm that this is unstable. We also know, since there was one change, that there's one pole in the right half of the s-plane. And that's it. And now, there are some special cases that you'll not be able to create an array for, and we're going to go over those special cases in the next lesson. But for now, we learned what the routh hurwitz criterion is, and hopefully learned how to pronounce it. routh hurwitz We also learned about why we need it and how to put together a Routh array. Finally, we interpreted the results so that we could glean important information about our system. As always, I'd highly recommend checking out the written tutorial on circuitbread.com that Kushal wrote and that this video is based on. I also want to thank our friends of CircuitBread that support us in creating this content. The best way to support us is to go check out our friends and see what tools, educational materials, and samples they have for you. If you found this helpful or interesting, give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in the next one. Take care. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. Did you know that CircuitBread.com also has a ton of other stuff? including free electronics and electrical engineering tools. Besides a scientific calculator, we have a few dozen other tools, including a delta Y calculator, LED resistor calculator, a binary, decimal, hexadecimal, and more converter, as well as a slew of other unit converters. Go check them out.